Let us now have this second example in constructing a frequency distribution table. Our data is about weights of 30 students. As you can see, the values given are not whole number. It has a one decimal place. Still, we will be using these five steps. First one is to estimate the number of class intervals and then determine the range then we have to obtain the class size and set the lowest value as the first lower limit and get the upper limit. Then finally, we are just going to repeat this process until we will reach the last limit that includes the highest value from the data. For the first step, we will be using this formula k is equal to 1 plus 3 log n. So how are we going to obtain the value of n? That is simply by counting the values in the given data set. So in this case, our n is 30. Then use your calculator to obtain the value of log 30. So just press log n 30, then you will have 1.4771215255 multiplied it by 3 so you have 4.4313637664 and then add it to 1 you will now have your k as 5.4313637664 and then round it off so your estimated number of classes will be 5 then the second step determine the range so to obtain the range we'll be using this formula highest minus lowest so what is good in our given data is that this already arranged from lowest to highest you have to note that before solving the range your data must be arranged from lowest to highest okay so in this case our highest value is 56.8 and then the lowest value is 40.5. So, that gives us a range of 16.3. So, the third step is to determine the class size. So, class size is represented by letter C. And the formula for that is range divided by K. So, from our previous calculation, our range is 16.3 and then our k is 5. So, 16.3 divided by 5, that is 3.26 or 3.3. So, in our previous example, uh, after dividing the range and k, we round it off to the whole number. But then, in this case, as we round it off, uh, we round it off to one decimal place. Why? It is because the given data has one decimal place. So, by referring to the table below for the precision, since our given data set has one decimal place, so the precision must be 0.1. So that is why our class size must be round off to one decimal place. So now our class size must be 3.3, not a whole number 3. Okay? So for the fourth step, we are now going to construct a two-column table that is for the class intervals and for the second column is the frequency. So, we have to note the three values. First is the lowest value which is 40.5. The highest value is 56.8. And then our obtained class size is 3.5. Three. So, how are we going to make our class interval? So, we have to start from the lowest value as our first lower limit. So, that means our first lower limit is now 40.5. Now, to obtain the first upper limit, 
all we have to do is just lower limit plus class size minus 0.1. So, from our previous example, the first upper limit is obtained by lower limit plus class size minus 1. Since, in the previous example, the given data are whole number. But this time, in our second example, the given data set has one decimal point. That is why we have to subtract point 0.1, not a whole number 1. Okay? So, our first upper limit is 40.5 plus 3.3 minus point 0.1. That gives us 43.7. Okay? So, next... We have to obtain our second interval. So, how? Okay, we will be using our value for C. So, to obtain the second lower limit, you have to add 40.5 plus 3.3. So, that gives us 43.8. And now, for the second upper limit, or we have to add 43.7 plus 3.3. Okay, as what I have mentioned earlier, we will just repeat the process until we will reach the class interval that will contain the highest value. Okay, so I will leave the last three class intervals for you to work okay so you may pause this video and check if your answer is the same with the class intervals posted here okay so do we have the same answer the third lower Limit is 47.1. We obtained it by adding 43.8 plus 3.3. .3. Okay, so did you obtain 50.3 for the third upper limit? So how did we obtain that one? That is simply by adding 47.7 plus 3.3. .3. Okay, so... Another thing that you need to check if your class intervals are correct, notice that in the first class interval, okay, so the first upper limit is not overlapping with the second lower limit. Okay, so you have there 43.7 and then the second lower limit is 43.8. So, ang mga values na ito ay hindi nag-overlap. So, si 43.8 is exactly the next value of 43.7. Then, what are the other things? Okay, so same with 47.0. So, next value to that is 47.1. And then, so, i-check natin lahat. Si 50.3, hindi siya nag-overlap sa next na lower limit, which is, is 50.4. So, ang ibig sabihin ng hindi nag-overlap is hindi siya nag-exceed. Okay. Si 50.3, does not exceed with 50.4. So, and then, 53.6, exactly yung next number niya, I see 53.7. So, still, these values are not overlapping. So, that means, the class intervals that we have created are correct. Okay, so, for the next column, that is for the frequency. Frequency again. That means there are how many values 
included in that class interval. So, we will start with the first class interval that is 40.5 to 43.7. So, balikan natin yung given na data set. Ano, ano ba yung mga values na pwedeng ma-include sa first class interval? So, we have to count 40.5 that is the first one then 2 3 4 no so there are only 3 values that are included in the first interval so hindi siya pwedeng maging 4 kasi yung next na value ay 43.9 Nag-exceed na yan ni 43.7. So, there are only 3 values na pwedeng i-include doon sa first na class interval. Now, for the second class interval, we have 43.8 to 47. Okay? So, let us count there are how many values na pwedeng include sa class interval na ito. So, we will start from 43.9. So, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are only 9. So, we have to start, we have to stop until 46.8. Since, si 47.3 ay hindi na pwedeng i-include sa second class interval. That is more than 47 only. So, there are only 9 values for the second class interval. So, how about for the third class interval? We will start from 47.3. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So, until 49.9, 51.1 cannot be included in the third class interval since 51.1 is more than 50.3. Okay? So, there are, again, there are 8 values in the third class interval. So, for the interval 50.4 until 53.6, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. There are only 7 values for the 4th interval. Okay? Then finally, for the last class interval, which is 53.7 to 56.9, there are 1, Two, three values. Okay, so to check if the obtained frequency are all correct, you have to add it. It must be the same with our n. So since there are 30 values, the total must be also 30. So this is now our frequency distribution table. So Ano ba yung pwedeng uh, ma-generate natin na information from this table? Okay, so if we have this class interval 40.5 to 43.7 and the frequency is 3, so we can say that from the 30 students, there are 3 students who weigh 40.5 to 43.7 kilograms. For the second class interval, the frequency is 9. So, we can say that from 30 students, there are 9 students who weigh 43.8 to 47 kilogram. We may also express this in percentage. So, how? Just use the frequency divided by the total number of values, which is 30, and then multiplied it by 100. So, you will get 30%. So, that means 30% of the students weigh 43.8 to 47 kilogram. Okay. So, we will end this part. 
and then please watch the next video for another topic about uh, cumulative frequency.